What's up YouTube? This is Demkeys back again with another Unity tutorial. Today I will teach you about slider joints, slider joint 2D, sorry. Now in the past few recordings, past few failed recordings, <laughs> when I tried to explain <coughs> what slider joint is used for, um, it was it was a really sucky explanation so I'm not going to try that again. Uh, I'll just give you an example. Uh, say for example a sliding door. You can create that using slider join 2D. Of course it's not limited only to that. You can use it for whatever you want. However you want. Uh, so let's begin. I have already created a background and attached a gray material to it and I've created a ground object and attached a black material to it and I've also created an extra material this will be attached to our box boxes actually I'll be creating two of these Okay, so both these boxes have identical properties except for the name. One is box one, one is box two. And okay. So I'm going to attach slider joint 2D to box one. Let me explain some of the properties of uh, slider joint 2D before we continue. Okay, collide connected. This is it. It basically dictates whether a collision will take place while this object is sliding or not. For example, if it is, uh, if box one is connected to box two. Using the, using the slider joint 2D, then when box 1 does actually come really close and collides, it won't go through, it will collide if you check collide connected. Where's that option? Here. If you check this option, then they will both collide and box 1 will stop right there and it will not go through box 2. I'm going to check this for this example. Next connected rigid body. You can leave this empty if you want uh, in which case the uh, box 1 is going to be connected box 1's slider joint 2D the other end of the slider joint is going to be connected to somewhere in local space. For this example I'm going to attach box 2 to it. Anchor. This tells where the anchor of Anchor is basically one end of the slider joint where that end is going to be attached. Uh, when you say anchor, you are talking about um, where, how do I explain this? Okay, so the slider joint will have two ends. One end is going to be attached to box one and the other end will be attached to box two. Anchor is the end of the slider joint which will be attached to box one. Connected anchor would be what's attached to box 2. In this example, what's attached to box 2. So you can control where it is, where the anchor is connected. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but let me show you in, in an example. I'll show you in a, in a little bit what happens when you change these values. Angle. This changes the angle. Sorry. Uh, this changes the angle of the slider joint. It's not necessary that you you would want your slide to be at a 90 degree angle. Maybe you might want it to, I don't know, be say as an imaginary slope or something like that. 
I don't know if that's a very good example, but just imagine that. So you can change the angle of the uh, of the entire slider joint. I'll show you what effect that has as well. Okay, you've got use motor and use limits. Let me explain the properties of motor first. Okay, in motor you have motor speed, which is the maximum speed, or uh, let's say, yeah, the maximum speed. Let's not say maximum. Let's say just the speed. The speed at which this box would would move until it reaches to the end of the slider joint. Maximum motor force is the force that will be applied gradually until it reaches the motor speed. So say for example motor speed would be 40 and you apply 20. So it's going to apply 20 and then the next step it's going to increase to 40 and so it'll stop over there. If you well no the box won't stop there the increase in speed will stop there because it has reached the maximum speed. If you set it to 10 then it'll go from 10 to 20 then to 30 and then to 40 and it'll stop because it has reached the maximum speed. You can set the speed to what's the max? 1 million Okay, I, I think I read on Unity's website that the speed is, just a minute, let me look that up. Yeah, the motor speed would be in units per second, so I guess this would be 40 units per second. So it's going to start out at 10 units per second and then move on to 20, then 30, then 40. You can even, you can change this also to whatever value you want. If I set it to 5, it will keep increasing by 5 until it reaches 40 and it will stop there. You'll see what effect this has as well once I show you the example. Next, limits. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I've explained motor. So, if you check use motor, then these values do matter. But if you uncheck it, then the box is not going to use any motor. The slider joint won't use any motor, so there won't be any sort of force being applied to uh, the box. Like maybe you might want to uh, use your own scripting and add, say, rigid body 2D dot add force, and you know you want to make the box jump on your own. You don't want the motor to move the box for you, so you can uncheck this box. For this example, I'm going to check it. Okay. Limits. Translation limits. What is lower translation? Lower translation. Oh shit, I forgot. Lower translation. Just a minute, let me run this and see. Oh, yeah. Lower translation. This would be the distance. This will set the distance between one end of the slider joint and, no, not one end. This will set the distance between, say, in this example, box one and box two. See what happens when I set this to three and I set upper translation to 5. Upper translation is the total distance that would be yeah the total distance until the end of the slider joint has been reached. Watch what happens now. Uh, this box 1 is going to start at I'm gonna keep this 2 so it's probably gonna start out here and then because I've checked, oh by the way, to use uh, translation limits, you have to check use limits. Yeah, so where was I? Yeah, and because uh, there is force being applied to that box, so it's going to 
increase uh, it's it's going to move up at a certain speed once it has reached to whatever distance I have kept over here it will stop so you can say lower translation would be where this box is going to start off and upper translation would be the max distance that it can go before reaching the end the end of the slider that is let's play and, and see what happens that's weird I guess there's not enough force being applied yep as you can see it has stopped at five uh, five is the max distance that I kept also I had to show you what anchor does okay now I'm going to s I'm going to change this value to one so what happened two three four I could even set it to minus one or minus two you can do the same thing with this as well and you can also do the same thing with the connected anchor now I can't give you a very good example of when this would be useful so excuse me for that but yeah on with our example now I am not going to use any motor force instead I'm going to oh by the way let me show you where this starts off see lower translation this is where it's going to start off it, or I guess saying start off is not the best uh, saying start off is not a good idea uh, what can I say for this okay I cannot say <laughs> I cannot say anything for this I will just show you through an example I'm going to add a script to this nothing special it's just it's just going to be um, a script to wait why isn't it opening yeah it's just going to be a script to move the joint and to make the body the body the box jump in fact we are not moving the joint we are moving the box and because it's attached to the other box through slider joint 2d so the other box is going to move as well okay so what I've done here is I've created two variables uh, move speed and jump height they're both public floats then I created another variable float edge this is going to store 
a value anywhere between minus 1 and plus 1 or just 1 and then multiply that with move speed and then this entire value is going to be applied over here in transform.translate which will help our character to move our character well yeah let's just call it a character a box our box to move next I created an if condition to make our character jump a box jump sorry I'm gonna save the script and input the values this would be 0 0.2 and this would be 100 okay now you know that upper translation is 5 which means the box is only going to go up to 5 whatever it's only going to go up to a certain distance and then stop there okay my laptop's performance seems to be really really bad just a minute oh shit the entire laptop's slowing down Okay, I'm not sure what's wrong. Yeah. Now, did you see that? It went up to the limit and then stopped there. And then it started pulling the other object with it. Because the force is still being applied. Well, uh, this is because the force is being applied, I guess you can say, externally but if you use uh, use motor I guess it's gonna stop as soon as it reaches to the upper translation lower translation would be maybe the distance between these two objects so if I set it to 3 it'll be like that and in that case when it jumps you know what let me apply more force so the thing will jump up without me having to press spacebar twice See that? Okay, so I hope you get the point. Mm, what else is remaining? Angle. Yep. Let's change this angle to 45. See that? okay I'm not gonna apply that force let's use this force see it goes up to there and stops let's apply a force of 40 goes up to there and stops you can change this angle to even 90 in which case when sorry when you move this object you're either gonna push the other object or drag it along with you you can change it to whatever 180 or 270 360 which is back to the same same thing again I'm not sure which one is up and which one is down let me have a look okay yeah it's still the same yeah so I guess we are done I hope this tutorial was helpful um, don't forget to like share and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time